We've all heard that like charges repel and opposites attract, but how do charges really work? Charge, like mass, is what's known as an intrinsic property of an object. It's a fundamental property to the object that we can measure. However, unlike mass, an object can either have a positive or negative charge, depending on how many protons or electrons it has. Another property of charge is that it's quantized, or always shows up in multiples of one elementary constant. The elementary constant is equal to the charge of one electron or one proton, which has a magnitude of around 1.61 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. Finally, like mass, charge in object interactions is conserved. This means that if two objects that allow charges to move freely, or objects called conductors, are placed in contact with one another, the total charge of the two objects must stay the same. Now, one property related to the electric polarizability of a substance that we didn't touch on in AP Physics 1 is known as electric permittivity, symbolized by the Greek letter epsilon. The only value we'll need to know for AP Physics 2 is called the permittivity of free space, but this value will be on your equation sheet. With this, let's rewrite our Coulomb's law from AP Physics 1 using this new value, giving us this form of Coulomb's law here. You should familiarize yourself with using 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught instead of the k from AP Physics 1, as this form is much more common in upcoming units and physics classes. With this quick revision of some old formulas, let's look at a new concept related to electrostatics, the electric field E. Similar to the gravitational field, the electric field is a vector field produced by charges that allow them to apply forces on one another without physically touching each other. The way we represent these electric fields is through arrows that point away from positive charges and towards negative charges, which is the direction of the force applied by these fields on a positive test charge. The relationship between force felt, charge, and electric field is given by this equation, using our new form of Coulomb's law for a situation with a test charge in an isolated charge's electric field, we can arrive at the equation for the electric field due to a single charge Q. Another new idea related to these electric fields is electric potential V. Charges gain or lose electric potential energy when they experience electric potential changes, given by this equation here. In addition, the relationship between the potential difference felt by a charge moving through a constant electric field is simply the electric field times the distance traveled. And finally, the electric potential due to an isolated charge Q is given by this equation here. One common object that combines all of these concepts is known as a parallel plate capacitor, or two sheets of conducting material that are oppositely charged. For large surfaces and small separation distances, the electric field between these two plates will be perpendicular to the plates. While we don't need to go too in-depth about capacitors in this class, the general idea of this object is that it stores energy through the electric field the opposite charges create. Though the following equations can be derived and used more in-depth in AP Physics C, the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor is given by this equation here. Most notably, the potential difference we learned about is related to the capacitance and the charge on the plates by this equation, as well as the energy stored in a parallel plate capacitor is given by this equation, though these two relationships can be combined to find different forms of the potential energy stored in a parallel plate capacitor. With that, you can feel good about learning about charge, electric field, electric potential, and their basic applications to a parallel plate capacitor.